but Arnold Palmer was all man, and I say that in all due respect to women, and I love women. But this guy, this guy, this is a guy that was all man. When he took showers with the other pros, they came out of there, they said, oh my God. That's unbelievable. <laughs> There is a masculinity problem with the American conservative movement today. This is the leader of the conservative movement talking about another man's body, talking about another man's. This is a man who I've never heard talk about his own wife anywhere close to this level of admiration. But I have heard him talk about his daughter's breasts and now about a dead golfer's body. This is the same man who pretended to flirt with another man dressed up as a woman, drunk Rudy Giuliani, dressed in drag, doing some little scene. Within a conservative movement, you have people like Steven Crowder, known for touching other men with his pee-pee, known for dressing in drag. Michael Knowles did a movie where he did a sex scene in bed with another man. Jesse Lee Peterson goes around talking about men should be men and going against homosexuals. Meanwhile, he himself was a homosexual. Then it was another conservative influencer who admitted, admitted to having sex with a trans person. Then there's Alex Jones, gay sex on his phones. Then we have Ben Shapiro taking photos of himself with a piece of wood and trying to grow a beard while wearing makeup on his little fancy set. Then we have Officer Tatum as emotional as a girl, getting all bent out of shape in a debate, cursing and threatening to assault someone just because they disagree with you. Very feminine. We have JD Vance, not mad enough to either admit that he believes that Trump lost or admit that he believes that Trump won. Instead, acting like a female, ducking and diving, refusing to answer a very basic question. If you really believe Trump won, man up and say it. If you believe he lost, man up and say it. How could I forget Nick Fuentes who said that having sex with a woman is gay. He actually said that. And Andrew Tate said it'd be better to have sex with a trans woman than with an actual woman based on her being super ugly or something like that. What? This is Andrew Tate, a man who has an audience of predominantly young men and loves to walk around with his shirt off. So presumably, he likes showing his body to other young men and is advocating for having sex with a trans woman over an actual woman who is ugly. This is a conservative icon. Then we have the MAGA people. Grown men walking around with giant flags with another man's name on it. Grown men walking around with t-shirts, with pictures of a shirtless old guy. Walking around, getting all bent out of shape when other men say something about their guy. A real man wouldn't give a fuck what another man thinks about the person you're voting for. A real man doesn't need to put flags all over their house to show the whole world, I'm voting for Trump, right? A real man just shows up on election day and just votes for Trump. They don't need to wear a hat and a t-shirt and, and flag up their whole house, three, four flags on their trucks. The average liberal man who actually likes Kamala Harris wouldn't be caught dead wearing a Kamala shirt or t-shirt or certainly not having a flag on their truck. They're just gonna show up and vote, that's it. They're not trying to marry her. They're not into her like that. On the other hand, you have these men with a man's name on their hats and shirts and trucks and houses. Mississippi, Alabama, and Kentucky. Pornhub did a study on searches and found a lot of searches for gay porn in those red states. Who you think is watching those gay porn videos in those red states? Could it be Trump voters? This is feminine behavior. Now in contrast, in left-wing media, you have gay people who are gay, right? They don't go online attacking gay people and saying gay sucks, whatever, meanwhile secretly being in the closet. No, they come straight out and say, hey, I'm into men, which ironically, makes them more manly than the people in the modern conservative movement. The other thing is, no matter what Trump does, the American conservative movement today, the men don't have the strength to stand up and say, you know what? Well, not all of them, obviously, but most of them don't have the strength to stand up and say, you know what? Trump was wrong. That was wrong. I disagree with that. I like his policies. I'm going to vote for him. But man, oh man, this is trash. What he's saying was wrong. That's bad. What he's doing is wrong. And, and what is he doing talking about some guy's body? Like, that's just weird, right? They're not mad enough to do that. Because if they say that, then I get attacked by their tribe. And it takes a real man to be able to be willing to stand up against your tribe. I'm with you guys, but I'm not going to stand for this. 
right? I'm gonna go after Trump for what he does while I might still vote for him because I like his policies. But that's very rare in the American conservative movement. Look at the preoccupation with owning the libs. Very feminine, very feminine. That's what you're worried about. A real man is worried about protecting their family, is worried about providing for their family, is worried about their, their job. And, you know, they have much more big things to worry about. They're not sitting there online all excited. Oh, they're getting mad. Oh, I'm going to win. Then you got somebody like Tim Pool, who has a receding hairline, much like I do. But I'm mad enough to accept it and just shave it off. Instead, like a girl, he covers it up with that beanie cap and walks around everywhere with this goddamn beanie cap because he's not man enough to either just own up to his receding hairline or just shave it off. And then he's not man enough to admit what he's doing. He's gonna lie and say, oh, it's because of uh, my privacy and all kind of bullshit. Like, they're kind of spineless. You got people in the Republican party, Trump insults your wife. Meanwhile, you're making phone calls, for, you know, supporting this guy, right? Trump could insult you and your family, your woman, and you let that stand? Where is the masculinity in the modern conservative movement? where men are men, right? You don't insult my wife and then expect me to support you. I don't care about your policy, I don't care about nothing else, right? Old school conservatism, they put God, country, and family above anything else. Old school conservatism would never allow another man to insult your wife. Nobody messes with your family. That's a key component of being a man. You are a provider, you are a protector. Now, if you are a very young man, like, uh, 18 year old and 19 year old, you will protect your girlfriend by actually fighting someone that said something about your wife. But grown men, we have control of our emotions, right? So if you insult my wife, I'm not trying to fight you. I'm a grown ass man, but I'm also not gonna be supporting you. I'm not gonna insult my wife by supporting a guy who insulted her. You insult my wife, I want nothing to do with you. I like your policies. I will let other people support you and your policies, right? They don't need me. I'm just one person, right? You don't need me. The only reason for me to still support you after you've insulted my wife is if I'm not a real man. I'm a spineless little dweeb. Just like Jim Jordan, the list goes on on and on. Even look at January 6th. I mean, I'm glad that there wasn't major bloodshed, but here's the reality. These men who have been all over the country practicing with their little guns, shooting stuff in the woods or whatever, they came to the Capitol and brought weapons. They absolutely brought weapons, they had lots of weapons. And believing that the election was being stolen, as some of them did, believing that the, the, believing that the election was being stolen, believing that tyranny was here. This is the whole reason they're defending about we need guns, because how are we going to protect ourselves? And here was their moment. They had the numbers. They had the weapons. They didn't fire a single shot. They didn't fire a single shot, right? All this talk online and whatever, and brought the ammo, brought the weapons, but did not have the strength to fire a single shot which is actually a good thing. However, again, they believe that the election was being stolen. And the best that the modern conservative movement could come up with is people that stood there and let it happen. They let them in, they let the election be stolen. Let them tell it. Now, some of them went the mile and actually assaulted police officers, which was an absolute disgrace. But at least a few of them were willing to put their money where their mouths were. But most of them, they just let it happen. Imagine a group of patriots, so-called patriots, armed and have the training and have the skill, who sit by and allow an election to be stolen, to allow our democracy to be destroyed. Again, in their minds, that was what was happening. And they let it happen. These are not real men. There is absolutely an insane problem with masculinity in the modern American conservative movement, which is very ironic because they're the ones who like to talk about everybody else's masculinity. The most effeminate men in the country are worried about other men's masculinity. Right, this is the Debate Me channel. Debate me in the comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, be well. When I was growing up, these conservative men, mm, yeah, they'd be getting bullied.